All right, this piece of ugliness is from Waduk 2. It was one of those locks rattling around the box he just sent me. He told me there was some kind of weird multi lock coming, and I guess this is definitely it. This fixed the category. This one oddly does have a key, unlike some of the others. So slide in, rotate, looks like 45 degrees, and obviously you get an open. Uh, looking down in here, when it's locked, I'm just trying to figure out if we could shim it, because I know that question always comes up. It looks like it might be shimmable. If you can, oh no it's not, because we have that sh machine shoulder on the shackle. Let's make sure. Anyway, the other thing I'm also looking at is this, is this plastic cover. Let's put this guy back together. So, to prove it, this is in a locked position. Okay, so they are definitely spring-loaded. What in the world is all this? All right, so when the lock is open, having just taken the shackle out, I notice that the diameter, that's probably, like if, if the lock is not in use, it kind of, I mean, I don't know. Then you can hang it on the door. I, I really don't know. I'm guessing that's what that's for. I don't believe a chain. There's no point in a chain going into it because I believe we can, looking at the top here, that looks like a compression fit. So we don't need that. We do need this, and that is the weirdest looking. It looks like a Series 10 multi-lock, except the key is at this weird angle instead of on the bottom like we're used to. It's got the typical steel, hardened steel outer case, and then there's a, a inset screw right there. We should be able to get that out after we get it picked and get the shackle out. Then you remove that screw, then everything will slide out of this hardened steel outer case. Uh, we do have a little bit of lip there, but... Move that out of here. Let's find a tensioner. Put him back where he belongs before I lose him. Um, tensioner. I'm going to try to pick this in my hand. Hopefully I can keep him centered. It's too big. Let's try the other end. The other end fits better, but I notice he's over there too far, and I won't be able to pick from the right side. I don't normally pick from the right side, but if I get a pick stuck on the left side, sometimes it's nice to be able to take a second pick, shove him down the right side to get that pick unlocked. And so I'm going to leave that option open. I think that will work. All right, I'm going to start off with the flat flag from the multi-pick kit. And there's what the tip looks like. I did sand it a little bit, so let's try it. I'm going to start off with moderate tension, and I'm going to slide down. I want to pick the outer pins first. This is a multi-lock, so um, when you slide it in, you get a, what I call a speed bump when one of the pins binds. Pin one is springy, pin two springy, three springy, four. The one it's slamming into is Five is not giving. So he apparently is the first binder. So let's see if we can do. I'm gonna oops, I'm gonna position the pick on five. Feel around and I just want to make sure we're only picking the outer pin. Got a little tiny click there. I'm on four now. He is binding as I'm starting to extract the pick. So let's pick him on the way out. I got a nice click. No fault set. Um, speaking of fault sets, uh, black case, it's hard to put a mark on here. Pay attention to the angle because at some point, hopefully, we're going to get stuck on the inner pins and we're going to get kind of an obscene. It'll probably ratchet way down, you know, something like that angle, telling us we're hung up on the inner pins. Uh, pin one, click on him. Come on, where are you? Okay, five is okay, four is still okay. I'm stuck behind one, little click on one. Okay, that's pin two starting to bind, nice click. Pin pick is stuck, there we go. And that was four again. He had popped back up. Maybe I got him out of order. Should have, probably should have picked pin one first. I don't know. 
Pin one is now back up, so let's pick him again. Got it. That was pin three, second click on him. And pin one, back up. Get down, what are you doing back up? What are you thinking? Pin four is back up. Minor click, no turn on the core though. And one's back up. He's certainly acting like a gatekeeper, but there's no counter rotation. He just clicks back into place. Pin four's back up. Okay, I felt a tiny click on pin three, and I did feel a little bit of a turn on the core. I'm starting to understand why Rich sent this lock to me. By the way, I, I did, it was crudded up, and I did squirt some uh, WD-40 in it. I know you guys like that. There we go. Again, pin three, slight turn on the core there. Pin one. Got all kinds of nastiness out of it, but that was the real purpose of that. This lock's been around a while, apparently. I'm on pin two, okay, nice click. Still no fault set. Come on. There we go. Nice deep fault set. Telling us that was pin four, by the way. He kept messing with me. So we have a deep fault set at this point. Now we've just got to try to find an inner pin. There's at least one holding him up. Okay, that was two. I didn't feel any change. Okay, that was four. Again, no change on the core. Tiny click on inner pin on one, but again, no open, obviously. Although I'd be, I'd be jumping up and down. Come on, where are you? I'm gonna apply heavier tension now, trying to force him. I don't normally do that on inner pins, but when I pulled the pick back out, I didn't really feel any binding pins. And I could have blown it at this point. I could have overset one of the inner pins, and that would not be a good thing, having come this far. Pin four, nothing. Oh, pin four, very slight turn. So we're on the right path. I'm trying to feel for any kind of counter rotation. There are security inner pin, and there we go. It was pin five. There are security inner pins. I don't think there's any in here though, but that was what I was starting to worry about. All right, we do have an open. Let's go ahead and move all this stuff out of the way. Keep the important stuff in frame, like that, for example. I'm trying to suck up to him. Maybe he'll send me some more locks. Um, yeah, I gotta open him up. So I should have measured this beforehand. Hopefully one of these is right. I grabbed a couple. Wouldn't you know it? I don't know if we have to take, there we go, have to take it all the way out. All right, let's be careful here, Bill, because I don't do this often enough to have a lot of confidence in what will exactly is going to happen here. This feels like, oh, you know what that is? It is nothing but a Series 10 that's been machined and they put this little framework on the inside to give it that angle. It is a little bit... Unusual. I don't think he will pull out this way. 
I think we have to take all the actuators off the top. As you can see, they are spring-loaded. All right, so let's avoid a disaster. What do you say? Okay, he, want to, okay, he does come out that way. So the whole lock looked like it's going to come out this way. Come on, guys, quit yelling. All that yelling for, you know, blow it, Bill, blow it. It's really screwing me up here. All right. That, we don't need that anymore. This is kind of weird because this is the Bible. And when I take that off of there, all that stuff is going to come popping out. I, I just know it. There's some of that gunk I was talking about. All right, you can see, I think all the pins are there. They may not be there in a minute when I release this spring pressure. Arg! I am never getting this dude back together. All right, um, there's number five. There's four. That did fall into the right slot. There's three. There's two and one. Let's get two, get one. He was one. All right, they are all there. They didn't spring anywhere. Thank goodness. Okay, we do have some anti-drills in here. We've got one in the top there. He went in from the side, actually, to keep from drilling out the shear line that way. There also appears to be one in the back there. Uh, I didn't see any ball bearing fall out of that little slot like they usually do, so that indicates this has probably been apart despite all that gunk at one time. All right, let's take a look. I'm just going to start dumping these guys. Inner, outer. That one stayed together. Inner, outer. And there's the inner. Come on, outer. I think that gunk is kind of holding these together. And nothing weird about it. All right, let's get him out of there. Tweezers. All right, there's the inner, there's the outer. Let's see if he will come apart for us. Come on. Okay, like that, like that, oh, no, like that. All right, no disaster, guys. Amazing. Let's take a look at one of these guys. I don't see any, I see only one uh, mushroom. These are the, the newer design spring-loaded ones, they do not come apart. So all the uppers are all standards. All the lowers are all standards. I was going to say except this one, but that is also a standard. I thought based on the crud, it looked like, a little bit, it looked like he might have been one of those mushrooms, but he is not. These are all standards in this, which is really kind of unusual. Anyway, guys, there you go. The multi-lock, I have no idea what model this guy is, from Wadok 2 in the UK. Appreciate your time, guys. Stay safe. Stay legal. Now I'm going to spend like an hour washing my hands. Thanks, guys.